Hello and welcome to a new episode in our Niagara system series. In this episode we're going to go over some of the common module effects that you find on emitters, some of the ones that you're more likely going to use more than others, and we're going to show you some tips and tricks around them too. In future episodes we'll go over more specific uh, visual effects and show you how to accomplish those, but this is going to be a good primer for you if you want to get started using and experimenting with Niagara. So here I've created an empty system and an empty emitter. If you don't know how to make these, you can right click, go to FX here, and you can add an empty Niagara system and a Niagara emitter. And I've got an emitter here, and we're going to go into this, like so. So if you want to know how what everything you see here, please check out my previous Niagara system videos, where I explain a lot of what you see here. We will be re-explaining some parts of it, but um, we won't go into too much detail. Um, so this is an emitter, and this is the default one that's set up when it's blank, and at the moment it's got a sprite renderer. We're for now, for this episode, going to keep sprite render there. So to get started, we need to actually make it spawn something in. So we go to emitter spawn, click on plus, and we're going to add a spawn rate on there. Click on here, and on here we're going to move the module spawn rate after emitter state. So click on fix issue, and that will fix that for us and put it in the right place. So you can either do that for me to spawn or you can do it for me to update. You've got a few options. Okay. So we want spawn right here. And this is how many are going to spawn every second. So if I change it to 100, there are 100 of those circle disks spawning as a particle. Um, so as I said, I want to go through some common things you want to maybe change and tweak to get things the way you want to look. Um, so let's go through some of them. So in the particle spawn here, you've got initialized particle. On here, you've got various things that you may want to change to the uh, size of the sprite. And you can see sprite size mode here set to unset. We can actually change that to another option. So you've got uniform, which basically means we can set it to a different size manually. So 10 is there. If we go to 50, it's bigger. Um, I can also do a random range for uniform. Now uniform means it's just going to uh, scale uh, horizontally and vertically at the same time. So it gives him proportion. So random uniform here, I've got five to ten being spawned in here. So you can't see them because they're on top of each other, but you're getting different size uh, uh, particles being spawned here. And you can see that also affect with rotation and UV mode as well. Uh, more about UV stuff in another episode. Won't cover it today. So that is uh, some of the basic stuff in initialized particle. We can also change their lifetime and uh, randomize that too if we want and i mentioned before but I'll, I'll highlight again if you see these little down arrows next to these options that means you can customize those values with all manner of things so i've clicked on this here and i can type in something like random and get a random range in float and i'll choose a range of three seconds to six seconds okay so again we're not going to see any difference at the moment because they're all on top of each other so they're hiding a lot of the details. So let's get around that and add some velocity to them and make them spread out or change the location of them at least. So another thing you want to do is make a move. So here we've got a couple of options. You can either set an initial velocity or you can add velocity. Adding velocity means it's going to speed up, whereas initial velocity is going to be set for a speed and just go at that constant speed. So to do that, we've got particle spawn and particle update. Particle spawn, you can go in here and look at velocity. And you can see add velocity or inherit velocity, whichever you want to go for. We go for add velocity. Now, when you do add velocity, you're going to get two possible fixes. You can either solve forces and velocity or apply initial forces. If you wanted to change over time, you need to solve forces and velocity. If you are doing initial forces, this is what you want to do for this one. So we're going to do the top one here, solve forces and velocity. I'm going to click on here. And that's now fixed it and put this solve forces and velocities in this section here. So on the add velocity in my particle spawn, I'm going to add velocity on this one to be in the uh, x here. I'm going to give it a velocity of 5 in the x. And you can see them slowly moving away. And if I increase that number further, I can make them go faster. So do 100. And there they go. And you can see the various sizes coming out of it too as it spawns those all in. Okay, uh, let's make it go a little bit faster. Oh, actually, no, let's give a bit more randomness in it. So we, let's 
click on it down arrow here do some random do a random uh range uh actually let's do let's have a bit of fun with this let's do random vector and the random vector will pick just a random direction basically and then you want to scale it with this vector scale here and because at the moment they're only going one unit away which is not going to notice that so let's increase that to 300 you get this sort of burst effect where they go off in all random directions which is pretty cool so we'll you leave that there that's pretty neat we quite like that um but you can see now they're all coming in different sizes they're dying at different times they're all doing their own unique little things and if we go back to initialize particle i can change the uniform range here to see greater value so if i can change that to 50 you're going to see even greater discrepancies between each one pretty neat and quite pretty so there's the add velocity stuff if you want to change their color we can go to particle update here and i'm going to choose color and on here i can set a color pretty standardly here so i can click on here and choose a color like so but what if i want to change that color over time which is quite common we normally want to do something like that uh, or make it fade out over time click on a little down arrow here do curve and do color from curve and you'll get a little gradient tool set up here where you can choose the color here and you can choose the opacity at the bottom so at the moment they're going to fade away you can see them fading away the closer they get to our life uh, life uh, time and you can see the curve index is set to normalized age what that means is basically zero on the curve so this end of the curve means at the start of their life and one means the end of their life so no matter how long their lifetime is set that will change adjusted per particle so let's tweak a few settings here. So I'm going to add a color here and make this one red to start off with. So you see the red and you see it fading out to white quite quickly. We've got this one here. I'm just delete that one. You can see it fade out to white even slower because white is at the end here. Uh, I'm going to add a middle color here. So we click on here, open this up and we'll make it change to, uh, let's make it change to green. Get that effect and likewise we can also customize the alpha quite simply as well we can just click and slide them as well so if i want it more opaque at the start and then fade out i can do that like so now there are other things we can do to it too as well so alongside uh, just adding velocity to things here, we can also change our location. So I'm going to go to particle spawn and go to location. I can see various location options. Now at the moment, they're all coming from one single point. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to come from a uh, sphere. So we go to sphere location. And now they'll spawn randomly with inside a sphere. And you can see the spawn point here. It's kind of like a crazy time going on. And that's them spawning this very small uh, sphere radius. Sphere so radius set to 100. If I increase that further to say maybe 300, you can see them starting in a much, much larger range of values. If I go down further, I can change the offset of this as well, change the scaling of it, change the sphere's orientation. Uh, sphere's orientation will come into play if you're worried about uh, like velocity not being random like we're doing at the moment. Um, you can also make it so it uses surface only. So at the moment they're spawning inside a sphere, but maybe you want them to spawn on around the edge of a sphere. So I can tick the surface only here. And you can see here the band thickness of the surface. So at zero, that means they'll spawn on the surface of the, the object. And if I turn off velocity for now, we should see them spawn as a ball. All right. So that's what's actually happening. They're spawning in these sort of spaces around on the outside of the sphere and we will then fly off now the band thickness means that it gives a bit of variance around the edge here so rather than spawning on exactly the surface they can expand in that uh, like a thickness to it so if i change that to say 30 maybe not that big let's say 10 um you will now get a band of them spawning around the edges not spawning in the center still still spawning like that uh, I can change the surface expansion mode so that thickness I can change it from inside to outside and now spawn outside that okay so 
Um, we can turn it off. And we can also change the hemispheres where they are distributed. So if I change it, say hemisphere in the X, you see them spawning only on one side in the positive X coordinate here. If I change it to just Y, you see it in a positive Y. And in the Z here, you see a positive Z. Okay. Uh, you've got sphere distribution being random as well. Here we can change it uniform or direct. The uniform appears in certain spots uniformly. So here we've got change the uniform distribution and the amount that we have and so forth. We can change all these settings and play around with them and see what they do. Uh, direct, we can specify an exact point they're going to spawn on. But I like the randomness. Quite nice. And I'm going to turn the hemisphere off so we get that ball again. Okay, so let's turn it on velocity again. So I'm going to tick the little tick next to velocity and let it back on. And there they go. Now, another thing that might be quite cool to use is things to do with movement and how you can change their movement further. So if we go to particle update here, I can change it into vortex and add vortex velocity. And in here, we're going to do move module before solve forces and velocity. Hit fix issue. And we can go on here and we can change the velocity amount. So I'm going to turn off add velocity and leave vortex on. And you can kind of see what vortex does. Yeah, it kind of turns and, and spins them around. Okay, that's vortex velocity. So if you wanted to like spin around a, a point, that's what you want. And you can change the way they spin by changing this vortex axis. Uh, default is Z1, so you can spin around on Z. But if I change that to 1 in the X and 0 in Z, you get them spinning around that way. Which could be quite useful for various things, but there you go. Um, and you can change the vortex amount again. This is all randomized or you can change this to a curve if you want You could do all sorts of things on this. So for example, we do a curve right from curve and It's going from 0 to 1 if I increase this to uh, Say 300 They'll start off fast and as they get close to their lifespan, they'll slow down and stop and You'll see this sort of overlapping effect So the curve here is going between a normalized value of 1 to 0 and our scale is just times in this value by that over its lifespan. And I can mess about with this curve as well. So if I put uh, another key in by using shift click, I can customize that further. I can make it slow down, make it speed up. Give it some real randomness to it. Like that. And with vortex axis, I can even customize this further, make it random entirely. Random vector. And this will make it random per particle. So each one's going to spin in its own axis randomly. I can add that velocity back on. And you'll see them do more spinning stuff and flying out as well at the same time. So there are the common ones that we see in our emitters. There are loads of, of modules. And as we go through more Niagara videos, you're going to see me using more of them to create different effects uh, for our games. Um, things like spells and attacks, things like that. We will go through a lot of these and explain them as best we can. Um, but by all means, the best way to learn is to experiment. Try changing these numbers around, see what effect they have. And you can see for yourself and learn from this uh, as a good starting point but just all you do just click on the plus here and just add some in here and let's say there are loads so by means please help yourself okay well hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something new about niagara systems if you enjoyed this and we want to see more of my stuff head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan ailey where a donation of just one dollar get access to all of my videos before anyone else so thank you very much to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support it really is amazing so thank you thank you so much once again, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.